incredible story. This guy came to North Dakota State um, as a tight end and mm-hmm. like kind of a small tight end. He put on 82 pounds. It's a different person. It's literally a different yeah. person. But it is and it isn't because he puts on 82 pounds and didn't lose any athleticism. It's, it's true, insane. Yeah. Great mover. So he ends up being their left tackle. Um, he definitely, like Skaronsky, has the shorter arms. There, there are a couple differences. We can get into it, why they don't think they're the exact same player and why I would move one and not the I, – I might ultimately move Skaronsky. I just think he deserves the chance to be considered a tackle until – proven otherwise and maybe you can make the same thing about Malk but um, we're talking about one of the most athletic offensive linemen in the entire draft and I do think he'll be a scheme fit with the Bears even though North Dakota State didn't run a ton of outside zone you just look at the movement skills you look at the ability Um, I also love he plays with a nastiness you guys know this about Mm -hmm. me if you are a lineman you got tape where you is why I like Tevin Jenkins so much you're gonna maul a guy 20 yards downfield Uh, give me that guy 10 out of 10 times, and he finishes his blocks. Um, but a couple differences here, okay? One, he is an older prospect. He's already 24 years old. Don't care. Um, but there might be a transition period with him at guard. Okay. Um, or in general, because he is coming from the FCS. And, and I don't think it's a lock that he's going to just step on the field from day one which is one of the differences between him and Skaronsky. I think, like, worst-case scenario with Skaronsky, he's your starting guard week one of this year. Yeah. I don't yeah. know that that's going to be the case with Malk. Um, so, because I, th- I think he's going to need more seasoning, and he's making a bigger jump in, um, in competition, and he's not quite – the biggest difference to me when I watch their film is Skaronsky, sound and pass protection, really good at passing off blocks. He seems to really see – his vision's great – and I think that my, in Mouk's case, he's got to get better in pass pro and will need somewhat of an adjustment period. So that, there's a reason, guys, why, the, why one of them is going to go top 10 and one of them is probably going to go in the second round. Uh, it's not just made up. And those are part of the reasons. I still love him as a prospect. I think if you take him, he can be a very good guard. I think he can provide you depth right away. Um, and, and in a pinch, I still think he can play tackle for you. So... You know, a lot to like about Cody Malk, who's been one of my favorites, as you guys know, since the start of the draft process. Yeah, he's not the, he's not the technician and, like, the consistent player that Pierce Skaronsky is. He just isn't at this point. But That's incredible looking at and that yeah, screen. Yeah, just his. <laughs> does the guy, I'm sorry, Nick. No, go, go right ahead. I just want to say, does the dude not look like he's fighting for Scotland in Braveheart? I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean that's what he looks like to be.